Veterinarians of Reddit, what common mistakes are we making with our pets? I'm in the middle of training right now, but one thing I see absolutely everywhere that kills me inside is fish being kept in small tanks or bowls. The idea that fish can be kept in bowls comes from the fact that people in East Asian countries like Japan would temporarily put their fish on display in bowls to show off to guests, and house them in large ponds most of the time. Westerners assumed such small containers were suitable to house fish in and this is still widespread today. Not only does a bowl destroy your fish's health due to the lack of air touching the surface per unit volume of water, but the space you're giving your fish is basically comparable to keeping a human in one room the whole of their life. Fish are cleverer than people give them credit, and they feel pain and emotion more than people give them credit for also. They can't pull facial expressions that we can empathize with, so their mental well-being is often overlooked. Even small fish need a decent amount of space to live, and things in their tank to hide in or explore. They grow much larger and live much longer than most people think. They absolutely need to be housed in the right accommodation, in the right environment the amount of fish I've seen being kept on shelves next to loudspeakers etc, and with the correct amount and type of other fish. It takes a lot of space, time and money to look after them decently they're not the low maintenance pets so many treat them as. 1. Letting them get fat. 2. Not taking care of their teeth. Obesity and dental disease are far and away the most common problems I see. You are buying breeds that are already prone to having a low life expectancy, like bulldogs. Certain breeds are terribly bred, the bulldog is by far the worst breed and you are signing yourself up to be paying for a lot vet bills. I had a vet once with a beautiful English bulldog. His comments to me was that the only reason he could afford to have a bulldog is because he was a vet. Veterinarian here, getting and relying on medical advice from breeders and groomers, with no medical background. I once saw a rat terrier with a fractured humerus, which typically requires surgical correction. As I stepped out of the room to check availability with a surgeon, the client called the dog's breeder who said not to follow my advice and to just put the dog in a sling and that she's done on her own dogs plenty. Also, not exercising dogs enough. Many behavioral problems can be solved with ample exercise daily. My breeder said there is no way that parvo test you did is positive. Trim your pet's nails. I can't tell you how many times I've had to wrestle an ingrown nail out of an animal's flesh, and that stuff can get in there deep, and most of the time, the animal doesn't give you any signs that it's in pain and the owners don't even notice it's happening. Hello, veterinary nurse here, please, if your pet got into your weed or edibles, just tell us, no we are not going to call the cops on you, we just want to treat your pet correctly and not waste our time, we really don't care that you smoke. Also, please put your weed up where your pets can't reach. If dogs will eat little crap then yes they certainly will eat your pot and definitely all of your baked edibles and candy. I'm seeing a lot of dog cat posts so I'll throw one about snakes. Snakes are not supposed to sneeze cough. They lack diaphragm so if yours does this, take it to the vet immediately. Please please do not drive with your snake free roaming. This is extremely unsafe for the snake as it causes stress and could get stuck somewhere while you are driving. Different snakes require different beddings, humidity levels, enrichment etc. Just because it works for a corn doesn't mean it's meant for a ball python. It is best, and highly recommended, to feed frozen mice to snakes. This is because live rodents can be dangerous to the snake if the snake does not want to eat. I've seen so many dead snake pets due to this, and also, easier storage. If your snake prefers a more lively meal, try dancing or running said dead mouse around the tank for it to attack. Understand your snake and stress. Do not humanize your snake into thinking that it's behaving in a mammal human like way. It could be showing signs of clear stress and you're seeing it as all look at its sassy face you can love your reptile while also respecting its boundaries. This is my personal rant tip. If you want a cool, look at me accessory may I suggest a new hairdo, a cool jacket or literally anything else besides a snake. These animals are surprisingly delicate to their environments and require everyday husbandry. You scaring people with it or using it as a way to get chicks is not helping the reputation of these pretty awesome creatures. They have fears, intelligence and likes dislikes like any other animal. They are not breathing jewelry. Reptiles in general are very complex pets to keep healthy. Do your research please. Learn the diets, the vitamins, 
the lights, the humidity etc. These animals can live to be over 20 yet rarely do due to poor husbandry. And my tip for all animals in general is enrichment. Play with your pets, train them, give them puzzles, new toys, new hiding boxes, etc. Literally anything to keep their minds and bodies fit. These creatures rely on us for their whole lives. They do not have phones, TVS, books, etc. They have us, their owners. It's our responsibility to keep them entertained and living full lives. Even a fish could enjoy some new plants and scenery every once in a while. I'm a vet. Not letting your dogs around other dogs until they have all their vaccines. Their socialization window closes about 14 weeks. Meaning it is pretty much closed if you wait until 16 weeks. This causes a lot of dogs to go nuts and freak out whenever they see something they didn't see during that period. Notice, I did not say to take them to the dog park. They need to be around other dogs, and other people, in controlled situations, puppy socialization classes, friends houses, etc. Make sure the dogs they are around are healthy, vaccinated, and good with puppies and let them have positive experiences with other dogs and people. Obviously never get behind on their vaccines while you're doing this. Expose them to your tall friends, your friends of different races, your friends with beards, hats, sunglasses, pull out the broom, an umbrella, an iron board, while giving them treats and having fun the whole time. Try to let them walk on slick floors, bricks, carpet, etc. So they won't have fears of those things. And always happy. Every happy, positive interaction with something makes them less afraid. Every lack of exposure, or negative interaction, makes them more afraid. Your dog is your friend, not your slave. Your goal is not to make him do exactly whatever you want no matter what. It's to make him have good manners, but also let him have his own preferences. 2. You're not training him like he's in the circus to do a bunch of stuff for your amusement. You're teaching him how to move safely in the world, which means not doing something, biting, urinating in the house, jumping uncontrollably, that will be a threat to his life someday. More dogs are surrendered and euthanized for behavior reasons than any other reason. Not socializing training puppies. Socialization, not just to other dogs, to people, cats, men in hats, vet care, foot touching, handling, bathing, car rides. ETC ETC ETC, basic dog behavior and development knowledge, and positive reinforcement training with just a few basic commands can be the difference between a well-adjusted dog in a loving home and a dog with persistent behavior issues being surrendered to a shelter. Form of EdTech here, few things, 1, spay new to your pets, no, Fifi does not need to have a litter, and it might actually endanger her health to do so. Look up Pyometra. There are too many unwanted dogs cats in the world. Please don't add to the burden. 2. Microchip your pet, and keep the information updated. It is usually the key to help your pet find their way back home. 3. Play with your kitten's feet. Seriously, start as early as possible. This will help with nail trimmings. 4. Socialize your puppies to anything and everything. When this is done safely, it can help prevent behavioral problems in the future. 5. Learn to read your pet's behavior. Knowing when they are stressed out scared sick can really help you avoid dangerous situations. One year away from being a full-blown vet, worked as a technician for 4 years before vet school. Please don't ignore cats screaming or looking constipated. They are likely suffering urinary blockage and they can die. Please bring them to a vet. It's not as much the food as the cows. Read the bag. There are plenty of calculators online that will give you an idea of how much your pet should be eating. Then compare that to the food you have, and measure out what is appropriate. And please, please, be kind to your vet. It is all too often we are accused of being in this for the money. We aren't. Most of us take on huge loans to the tune of 200k to be your pet's doctor. We also have one of the highest rates of suicide as far as a profession goes. Please keep that in mind before you leave a mean review. We take failure personal. Trust me. There may be some exceptions. But I speak for me and my colleagues. We love your pets too. That's why we spent 8 plus years getting to be their doctor. Here is my two cents on exotic pets and pocket pets as a veterinarian. Please for the love of god look up the basic husbandry and nutrition for an exotic pet before you go and purchase a super glider, hamster, iguana, bearded dragon, 
etc. The husbandry problems are 90% of an exotic vet's business honestly. People buy pocket pets exotics thinking they will be super low key pets that are easy to maintain. I argue they are much harder because of the delicate balance you have to strike. They have specific hide box needs, humidity needs, special bedding, heating requirements, basking areas, and special diets. They take a lot more work than your normal cat or dog. You would not believe the number of iguanas and lizards I have seen come in on emergency that are like rubber chickens and have zero bone density because the owners had no idea that calcium supplementation and UVB lighting were necessary. Also guinea pigs must have vitamin C supplementation. No the pet store does not sell you everything you need when you pick up your new pet. The kid at the pet store not telling you what it needs is not an excuse and it is your responsibility to research how to take care of your pet. Other mistakes people make is treating their exotic pet like a small version of a dog or cat. They have a dog that is super friendly and would never harm a fly so they let their bird hang out in the same room as the dog out of its cage. Shocker when the dog one day decides your bird is going to be lunch. Pocket pets and domestic pets are not friends and never will be. Another common exotic pet mistake is not realizing how expensive their care can be. That $10 hamster also needs to go see the veterinarian for an annual checkup. Just because a pet was cheap does not mean you shouldn't have at least a few hundred saved up for the annual checkup and then an additional minimum few hundred for illnesses. If you can't afford their basic care, then you can't afford a pet period. Most common mistake is not realizing that you absolutely must be proactive with a sick exotic pet. They are prey animals for the most part and designed to hide their illness. Once they show clinical signs, they are very sick and oftentimes can be too late. Wait and see often leads to dead pet. I'm vet. Please don't say that vets are in it for the money. I'm raising a family of 4 and last year I brought home less than 60k. Vets make a living but we will never be wealthy. We do not make recommendations to take your money. We make recommendations because we genuinely care about your pet's well-being. I have been a vet for 13 years and just last year made enough to buy a car, a Honda, and I still owe $80k on my student loans. Vets are not in it for the money. I'm a vet. I can list a million things I wish owners would understand about their pet's health, but equally important is understanding that if you cannot afford basic veterinary care then you cannot afford a pet. Period. This is an industry with serious mental health concerns. We are routinely presented with cases that could have been avoidable if you'd practiced the suggested preventative care, or brought your pet in for evaluation once the symptoms started rather than waiting 6 weeks until the animal is beyond help. We are routinely berated by the public for being uncaring or having no compassion for not providing our services for free, though often veterinary diagnostics are performed at a fraction of the cost of human diagnostics and the turn around time is considerably shorter. I do not want to euthanize your beloved family member, but if you have no ability to cover the estimated cost of care, you put us both in an unfortunate situation. The fact that I have to euthanize multiple pets on a daily basis is one of the worst parts of my job. Sometimes it's unavoidable, but oftentimes a traumatic end could be prevented with basic yearly checkups. Also please don't expect me to cry over every euthanasia. If I didn't distance myself from the heart-wrenching sadness, I would never be able to perform my job. I wish people would acknowledge the difference between surviving and thriving. This is most evident with exotic pets like reptiles and birds, but I think it applies to more common animals too. Too often you see people refusing certain treatment or being difficult about something because they, or usually their friends, partners, cousin or whatever have heard of a case where X treatment wasn't needed. Even if that were true, years of education and decades of scientific research tell me that X is probably the best thing to help your pet thrive. Vet student here, it's starting to be more in the media or at least the media I follow, and surprisingly, but the unscrupulous breeding and buying of brachycephalic, flat-faced, breeds. If you wanna improve the life of your pet, make sure they can breath from the off, or, be prepared to spend a lot of money on surgery to help them do so, along with other problems associated with it, not being able to exercise properly leading to obesity and its consequences. Vet here, could go on all day but here are a few. Grain free is 100% marketing, you're paying extra for absolutely no benefit. While we are on the subject, byproducts should not specifically be avoided. 
Pets need nutrients, not ingredients. Spay and neuter. Why owners elect not to do this astounds me, considering the number of conditions that can be prevented by this simple procedure. If you cannot afford to drop $200 300 once a year on your pet, you should not have a pet. This covers only the basic routine services a pet should receive once yearly. Exams. Preventative medications and testing. Vaccines. ETC. If you have a pet, set aside a specific emergency fund for this pet. Depending on the condition, a few hundred bucks can save a life. On a similar note, do not get a Great Dane and act surprised that medications for a 150 pound dog are more expensive than your old terrier's medications. Listen to your veterinarian. The breeder said, is not a valid excuse for anything. It doesn't take much to put two dogs in a room and wait 60 days. Why people say this to a veterinarian is beyond me. Your breeder makes money on making sure each bee produces a large number of viable offspring nothing more. Please vaccinate for the conditions your veterinarian recommends, when they recommend them. If you are not willing to spend the appropriate amount of time training and exercising your high energy dog, please get a fish. If you do not have experience with any dog in the working class, please at least put in the time to research and then train your GSD, GSP, etc. Do not purchase a pet for someone else as a surprise. Getting a pet is a 10-20 year commitment and should not be dumped on an unwilling or unable family member girlfriend, etc. Not really a mistake. More of us are veterinarians have one of if not the highest suicide rate by profession. This is influenced by high stress environment, desire to save every pet, inability to cope with a mistake, misdiagnosis or lost pet, high student loan debt, access to euthanasia other drugs, view on euthanasia, etc. Please be kind to your veterinarian. I wish I could help people understand that I'm really not trying to rob them when I recommend diagnostics. I'm trying to get more information so I can make the best medical recommendations for their pet. Without that information, I'm just guessing educated guessing, but less educated than I could be if you just let me run the dang chem panel. Yes, I understand you will still have to pay for treatment afterwards, and that makes you upset about wasting money. But there is a better chance that treatment will work if you let me actually diagnose the problem. It is so hard to make people understand this, and it can be a huge impediment to appropriate care. I get it when people truly have a tight budget, but the people with the coach handbag and the newest iPhone, who decline a $25 test for their $1500 bulldog, those people are the bane of my existence. Just a reminder if the sidewalk is too hot for your bare feet. Your dog is definitely not having any better of a time on it. Not vaccinating your pets because you are sold on the Kool-Aid offered by anti-vaxxers. Not keeping your pet in optimal body condition score. Not going for yearly checkups. Is anyone gonna speak up for exotic pets? Non-cat dog pets are sometimes horribly cared for, even with good intent. Especially reptiles, pet stores normally give people uneducated guidelines for care. Their own animals available for sale are often kept in inappropriate and even deadly conditions while waiting to be sold. Cats are in heat and are able to get pregnant for longer than you may think. Even if they don't appear to be in heat, they can also get pregnant again 72 hours after having kittens. Then you got these people like, but she wasn't in heat so I'll let her go outside then why is she giving birth Becky? You have been visited by the Frosty Dogger, a cool summer will come to you only if you comment stay cool, Frosty Dogger. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video, or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.